Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about sickle cell anemia. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment and share my video. So sickle cell anemia is an autosome linked recessive trait. That means the gene responsible for this disease is present in one of the autosomes of our cell. And it is a mutation that causes this disease. And in order to cause that disease, the mutation should be there in both the alleles since it is a recessive trait. So it can be transmitted from parents to the offspring when both the parents are carrier for the gene that is heterozygous. So actually this disease is controlled by a pair of allele Hb, Hb is for hemoglobin, HbA and HbS. Okay, so actually we represent the normal gene as HbA and the mutant gene as HbS. Suppose, uh, let me write it here. Okay. Suppose the father has uh, the genotype HbA, HbS. This is the father. And the mother also has the same genotype. That is HbA and HbS. That means both are heterozygous. So we call this condition as carriers. Then only there is a 25% chance that the baby is diseased. If unfortunately he or she receives both the mutant alleles. That means the baby's genotype is HbS, HbS. So out of the three possible genotypes, only homozygous individuals for HbS, that is HbS, HbS, just like this, show the diseased phenotype. So heterozygous individuals for HbS are unaffected. Like these father and mother, they are unaffected, but their carrier of the disease as there is 50% probability of transmission of the mutant gene to the progeny. So from the father, it is 50% chance that his gamete containing mutant gene is passed to the progeny. Since half of the gametes contain HbA and half contain HbS. Same could be stated for the mother. So if we see the gametes, what they will form, the gametes will be like, like this. These are two types of gametes, both will produce. Okay. Now let's see the causes of sickle cell anemia. So uh, this we will try to understand from the figure. So this is a normal HB gene, HB A. So we know that a gene contains series of codons. So here one of the codon is this CTC and the mRNA gets generated accordingly via transcription and which has the codon GAG. Now the protein forms, this is the protein. So it is called beta globin protein which is the building block of hemoglobin. And a number of amino acids, one of the amino acid is glutamic acid. This is the glutamic acid GLU. And it is present in the sixth position of the protein. Right? So now we will see what happens in the disease. So there is the mutation in this gene. 
and a base T is substituted by A and the RNA forms accordingly which has GUG codon instead of normal GAG and the faulty protein forms which has the amino acid valine at the sixth position instead of normal glutamic acid. Let's check the text. So the defect is caused by the substitution of glutamic acid by valine at the sixth position of the beta globin chain of the hemoglobin molecule. And the substitution of the amino acid in the globin protein results due to the single base substitution at the sixth codon of the beta globin gene from GAG to GUG. Okay. Let's see the symptoms of sickle cell anemia. So the mutant hemoglobin molecule undergoes polymerization causing the change in the shape of the RBC from biconcave disc to elongated sickle like structure. Okay. So here we can see this is the normal shape of the RBC and here it is distorted. And this type of shape is called sickle shape. Okay. So sickle cells break apart easily and they die. And it causes shortage of red blood cells. And that condition is known as anemia. Sickle shaped red blood cells block blood flow through tiny vessels to chest, abdomen and joints. It causes pain. Sickle shaped red blood cells block blood circulation in the hands and feet. It causes swelling of hands and feet. Sickle cells can damage the spleen, increasing vulnerability to infections. Red blood cells provide the body with the oxygen and nutrients needed for growth. A shortage of RBCs can slow growth in children. Sickle shaped red blood cells block the blood vessels that supply the eyes and this can damage the retina. Next we can see the treatment of sickle cell anemia. So stem cell transplantation or gene therapy and blood transfusion from healthy donor. Do you know the World Sickle Cell Day? It's on 19th June. So this is all about today's lecture. I hope you liked the lecture. If you want to get the PDF notes of this topic, please check the description box or first pinned comment. Thank you.